Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, How Pfizer is Using Illuminata to Support Pharmaceutical Development. I am Jesse Harris, a marketing communications specialist here at ACD Labs. And our presenter today, of course, is Dr. Hannah Davies, who is a principal scientist at uh, Pfizer in uh, specializing in analytical research and development and small molecular pharmaceuticals. She received her PhD from the University of Leeds on the topic of novel monomer template assemblies for molecular imprinting and their application in chiral stationary phase in liquid chromatography and as chemical sensors. She joined Pfizer in 2007 at the Sandwich site in the United Kingdom and has been supporting and then leading analytical activities in both drug substance and drug product small molecules through development. And she's now also part of a global initiative to embed Illuminata within their project workflows for impurity databasing. She is the, one of the co-leads of Pfizer UK's relationship with WISE, or Women in Science and Education, and she is a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry and a chartered chemist. Um, before we get into her presentation, though, just a few logistical notes, uh, technical notes. If you have questions during today's presentation, there'll be a question period at the end, and you can drop any of your questions in the question panel that's on the right-hand side, and we will hopefully be able to get to everything at the end end uh, here today, and then you can, but you can do that at any time. If you are having any issues with your sound or video quality, the best thing to do usually is to exit the webinar and then re-enter. A lot of things will be fixed if you're having issues there, um, but if you're still persisting and having more, more issues, just reach out to us uh, in the question panel as well or through, through chat, and I should be able to try and help you out with that while the presentation is going on so that you can uh, enjoy the, um, the, the content there. But without any further ado, let's get into things, and I'm very pleased to welcome our presenter, Dr. Hannah Davies. So thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to present the work that um, Pfizer are doing on how we're using Luminata to support um, small molecule process development. So I'll start by introducing Luminata and how it's structured at Pfizer before giving examples of how we can use it for um, to capture analytical data associated with um, API process development during manufacturing campaigns and during stability studies. Okay. So just to start with a little bit of background into um, Luminata, so, um, Typically, data, as you're probably aware, resides across multiple platforms. So we might have um, chromatograms in mPower, for example, LCUV and LCMS data. Um, we might have structural elucidation data in Spectrus DB or similar. We might have batch tables in Excel, um, synthetic roots in ELN, and so on. So we have um, a multitude of, of different platforms where, where we have analytical data. And we required really a digital solution for data management so that all of that data could be collated in one place. And this facilitates rapid decision making um, within CMC, so across the process development, force degradation and stress testing, batch genealogy, excipient compatibility and formulation development, just to name a few, a few of the different um, areas. So the solution that Pfizer wanted to explore to um, storing all of this data in one place was, was Luminata. And within Luminata, we have the ability to take um, a technique specific database, such as um, chroma chromatography, degradation, structural elucidation, and combine these with project specific databases. And the result is that for each project, we can view the analytical data, such as degradation pathways, impurity profiles, reference spectra, chromatograms, um, and so on, all in one place. So each project has their own um, Luminata project with associated analytical data 
that can be searched and, and data retrieved. So alongside each of these project databases sits a compounds database. Um, and that database is um, a record of all of the compounds that for, for um, a given Luminata project. Um, so whether that be drug substance, impurities, degradants, starting materials, they're all um, there in that compounds database. And a link is made between the compounds database and the structural elucidation record set. And that means that for a given compound, if any um, of that kind of, I guess, gold standard um, record, so of mass spec and NMR data are available, if they're available in the structural elucidation record set, they'll be pulled into the compounds database and be viewable within the Luminata database. We also have a linkage into Empower, so we can copy chromatograms um, directly from Empower into Luminata and attach them to a specific stage. We've also streamlined the build and management of drug degradation through um, a drug degradation stability map, and that's um, viewable within Luminata as well. And we have the functionality to be able to automatically upload Zenith files into Luminata. And the Zenith files are, um, or Zenith is an in silico tool for the prediction of drug drug degradation pathways. So all of that predictive um, data can also be databased in Luminata for a given project. And then the power of Luminata is that all of this data can be visualized, searched and filtered all in one place. So we have our database navigation on the um, left-hand side. We then have the process maps, so that might be the synthetic route um, that's mapped out. We have those um, gold standard reference um, spectra, so NMR and mass spec if available within the SEG database that have been automatically pulled in for a given compound. We have analytical data such as um, the LCUV and the LCMS, um, extracted ion chromatograms and so on, if they're available. And those have been brought in from Empower. And then we have the analytical data and results within the entity table and control chart, which is displayed here. So each level has four, each, sorry, each record has four level of four levels of descriptors. So level one, level two, level three, and level four. And the level one would be the Pfizer project name, level two, the process name, level three, which is further information about level two, and then level four, further information about level three. So just to give um, an idea of that hierarchical structure, um, our level one might be um, the Pfizer compound name followed by stability. And then that can be further broken down into API or drug product stability at level two. That can be further divided into, for example, um, clinical stability, forced degradation in the solid state, or forced degradation in the solution state. And then, for example, in the solid state, um, that can be further broken down into a record for light degradation, thermal degradation, thermal humidity, for example. So that just kind of gives an idea of the hierarchical structure that we're building within Luminata to organize all of our data. 
And as I said before, if a compound is found in both the um, Luminata project database and also in the SEG database, then a link will be made between the, the two and any spectra will be automatically pulled into um, Luminata as reference spectra. By right clicking on the spectrum here, we can navigate to the content within the, the structural elucidation database. So, so all of these linkages are made up and, and any um, information in the SEG database is readily retrievable at the click of a button. So we can directly navigate to the SEG database um, and the different screen forms here allow us to view associated information such as the certainty of ID, also the um, report reference and the electronic nab lab notebook reference should we wish, wish to navigate back to those. And we can also store metadata and retrieve that metadata from Luminata. So for example, the spectrum um, parameters, table of peaks, um, table of assignments, and so on for those reference spectra. And in terms of the direct linkage to Empower, so the first stage would be to map out um, the synthetic route or um, upload the synthetic route into Illuminata. And then we can use the Empower attachment script to um, attach that data to the individual stages. So that's simply a right click and selecting attach Empower data. We can then nav navigate to the Empower record set, the Empower project and the result ID. The process result will be um, previewed and we can then add it to the desired stage in or step in the synthetic route. And that, that's then displayed and all of the um, impurity um, amounts would also then be visible in the control chart for that particular um, stage. And for non-chromatographic -chrom data such as elemental impurities and water content and so on, we've got the ability to add test results manually as well. And again, it's a right click navigating to add test results and then manually entering that result. So in the example here, I've got um, a palladium result that I've added in manually. Okay, so hopefully that's, that's given an introduction to how Luminata is structured at Pfizer and some of the functionality that's available to us, um, some of which has been um, custom built for Pfizer. So I'll now move on to give some examples of how we're using Luminata to support our projects. And the first is for impurity tracking and specification overview for drug substances. So for some of our drug substance candidates, we're beginning to use Luminata as a digital control chart to track impurities across the synthetic route and view their specification at each step. And this is enabling us to move away from um, the way we may have traditionally stored this information. So through, for example, Excel or in Word documents. And we have a much more, more dynamic um, way of, of visualizing and viewing that data within Luminata. So um, in the process map, um, we can upload our process into Luminata and observe our theoretic, and we can include our observed and theoretical impurities for each stage. And um, the arrows link the different um, impurities across the stages. So for example, here um, depicted by the blue arrow, we've got intermediate one, which has carried over um, as an impurity um, in the next stage here. 
And then we've got impurity one at this stage that's carried over and fated to a different um, impurity at the next stage, and that's depicted by the green arrow. Down below, we have um, our entity table, and there we've got information for each impurity, such as its um, ICHM7 classification and the specification that that impurity is controlled to at that particular step. And we can add additional fields into this entity table through the Luminata config file. And again, we've got that linkage to um, reference spectra as well that have been pulled in um, from the structural elucidation database, should they exist for the different um, compounds. OK, so the second example I'd like to show is how Luminata is used to collate data during chemistry route optimization. So here we've got an example of where we're comparing two workups um, during starting material route development. So we've got an aqueous workup and we've got a non-aqueous workup. The synthetic route has been mapped out and the chromatograms have been appended to the resulting products for the two different um, workups. And that's using the mPower attachment script. And here we've, um, in the control chart, um, we've got the results for the individual records, um, but, but they are shown for the individual records in this case. The beauty of Luminata is that we can filter the data and we can view the um, results for the two products from the different workups side by side. And that's using the impurity master mode within Luminata. So we filter by stage four, which is um, our aqueous and our non-aqueous workup. And then at the click of the button, um, we can filter that data and display um, the results for the products side by side. And in this case, we can clearly see that the aqueous workup affords the cleaner product. So that's um, at a click of the button, we can view that data and feed that back to the chemists to make further decisions. So in the third example, um, we're using Luminata to collate data during our fate and purge studies. So here we've got an example where we're taking four different starting material batches that have different purity profiles. And we're taking them through to the next step in the synthetic route. And the synthetic route has been mapped out. Um, the chromatograms of the products from the four different starter materials have been appended um, using the mPower attachment script. And the results for the individual um, starter materials and products are displayed in the control chart. But again, similar to how I've just shown, um, we can filter that data so that we can view the products of the four from the four different starter materials um, side by side. So we've got that 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 um, immediate um, ability to be able to filter that data and the resultant control chart, which I've just popped out, out and made larger, shows the batch data for the four products side by side. So again, um, we can we can make decision based on those that data, visualizing that data easily. So the next example um, demonstrates how we're using Luminata to collate data during drugs, drug substance manufacturing campaigns. So in a typical campaign, we have a number of sources of data. So for example, we've got our chromatograms in mPower. We've got our batch genealogy, which would typically reside in GDMS. 
We've got our limbs, our, our analytical data, which might be in limbs or Excel. And we may even have um, vendor CFAs, which could be uploaded into a SharePoint drive. So we're looking at data from a number of different software programs. Um, and the beauty of Luminata is that all of that data can be stored in one place um, so that we can retrieve it and visualize it in the one location. And we can utilize the family tree functionality in Luminata to do that. So in the batch genealogy view, we can map out um, up the batches across the campaign. Um, and we can um, also include data such as the input and output amounts for the different um, stages of the campaign. Um, we have batch details, um, a table of batch details here where we can add information such as date of synthesis and location of synthesis. And we can append batch analytical data as well. So for example, the impurity levels um, across each of the batches. The synthetic route that was used in the campaign can be retrieved by right clicking and selecting go to reaction. And in a similar way to I've shown previously at the Luminata reactions level, we have that same fun functionality at the family tree level to be able to either attach Empower data through the Empower attachment script or to manually add data if we need to. And then in the batch genealogy data view, we can view the chromatograms for each of the batch and we can also create overlay plots and filter on batch data. Um, for example, if we wanted to compare drug substance batches from different campaigns, we can easily filter that. And then within the um, layout to view um, PDFs, we can also append PDFs to batches. Um, so where we've previously got those C of A's in SharePoint, we can append those as well um, to our different batches for a particular campaign and view those alongside the analytical data for the rest of the campaign. Okay, so um, in the final part of the presentation, I'd like to show how we're using Luminata to database stability studies, particularly when it comes to forced degradation. And as an analytical department, um, understanding, predicting, modeling, and monitoring drug degradation is one of the imp most important deliverables that we have. So it's really important um, that we're able to database all of that data to. Um, to build up that understanding. So drug degradation, um, over the past 20 years, the databasing of drug degradation has evolved from the early days of Cambridge Soft um, Drug Degradation Database through ACD Lab Spectrus and now um, into Luminata that we have today. And we've worked with Luminata to um, build some custom um, views within um, Luminata. So we have the project stability map view here, and this allows us to build up a dynamic stability map of our stability studies, in particular those forced degradation studies. So we can see which conditions have been run, the degradants and their structures under each, um, each condition. We can view mass spectra, UV data, and so on. And in the control chart, we can view the levels of the degradants and we can filter all of that data as well. And similar to previously shown, we have the ability to attach that data directly from Empower. So 
this this just shows that dynamic stability map popped out. So um, for a given um, project, we can build up a map of the API stability, um, including that Zenith in silico prediction of drug degradation, data that we've got for the solid state, the solution state, um, and likewise for the drug product, whether that be, for example, a liar file, an IV drug product, again, all of that, all of that um, stability data can be built into this map. And the colour coding um, relates to those studies that have completed. So it's a traffic light um, colour coding. So green for those studies that have completed. Amber for those studies that um, are still ongoing. And red for those that are still to do. Um, then there's also the um, ability to enter um, and display user data for each of the different studies. So by clicking um, this icon here, we can store details such as the lot number that was used for the particular stability study, lab notebook reference, um, and so on. And, and there's a free text field as well there. The stability map is built through a project map wizard here. So the degradation conditions can be selected or custom values can be entered. And the map is built, which then allows for population with chromatograms from Empower. And again, in a similar way to what I've shown previously, um, we can utilize the control chart and filter the control chart um, to display all of the results together. Um, so here we've got our control samples and our exposed samples across a number of different forced deg conditions. And we can start to look for trends in data, so impurities or degradants that are seen in all of the conditions or ones that are growing, those major degradations as well, we, we can easily see those. So, for example, we've got this impurity here, um, which is seen as a major degradant um, under the acidic exposure. So just to summarise, um, hopefully that's given you a flavour of um, firstly what Luminata it is and the benefits um, it's offered to us at Pfizer in terms of collating a huge amount of data in one place and to be able to filter um, that data and draw trends on that data. And also how we're using Luminata um, within analytical research and development as a tool to database our analytical data across process development, manufacturing campaigns, and also um, across stability studies. So thank you for, for listening to the presentation. I'd like to acknowledge the following um, people who have um, collaborated on this, um, both from within Pfizer and also colleagues at L uh, ACD Labs who have helped us with building in some of that um, custom functionality for us. And also thanks to um, ACD Labs for giving me the opportunity to present today. Are there any questions? So hello, yes, I should be showing up on screen uh, right now. Um, thank you very much for everybody who, uh, who was in the recording. We have a, a many questions who've already come in and I would love to get some more though, of course. So Hannah is just showing up as well. Thank you so much um, for that. A uh, quick question I can answer right now. Will there be a recording available? Yes, uh, you'll get an email out of that um, shortly, maybe today or tomorrow, um, so that you can review this or share it with your colleagues. So that is one quick one that I can uh, just uh, just a freebie there. So, but yes, of course, any other questions that you want to add to the chat, uh, do that there. But I have one that I'd like to start with. Um, how are you doing today, Hannah, by the way? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. You can hear me okay, yes? Yes, I can, I can, I can. Fabulous. 
Um, so you mentioned um, at the beginning that you wanted to consolidate um, information and data that was found on a number of different platforms that you were using. Um, but like, I would be interested in a little bit more of like the rationale as to why that was a concern. Like, what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Because I think that that's kind of common with a lot of pharmaceutical companies that they do have their data um, spread out across a number of different platforms. So, what were you trying to achieve by um, having it all accessible through through Luminata? I guess um, just to sort of consolidate it all in one place um, to speed up retrieval of data. Um, as a project lead, I guess finding um, you know a tool that consolidates all that data into one place um, for project management, um, rather than having, you know, for example, lots of different Excel spreadsheets with batch tables in um, and that sort of stuff. But to have it all in one place so that it can be filtered and searched um, just just makes um, you know life a lot easier. Um, especially from a project management point of view. Yeah, I think that's something that I've heard from some other folks as well, that the, the uh, particularly as project manager makes a, a really, really big difference in that. Um, so I have a bunch of questions here, so I'm moving through some of them. Um, there was a question that was asked about, uh, is a, does Luminata only automatically import chromatographic data from Empower, or does it have the ability to import from other types? I actually should have an answer from this question. I asked my uh, the solutions manager for this uh, through um, like uh, off air, and he uh, informed me that you can connect to any CDS that provides an API. So some examples are Chameleon, Atlas, and Unify. If you have more questions about that, I'll probably maybe put you in contact with uh, him about uh, that to get some information. But um, Maybe a question. Uh, do you have anything to say on that one, Hannah? Yeah, I mean, um, so so we haven't explored that. Um, I guess kind of direct connection um, into systems other than um, Empower, but we do. You know, there is still that ability to bring stuff into Spectrus and then bring that into Luminata as well. So, um, yeah, but we do have. Um, Open Lab now. We haven't explored it yet, but we do have Open Lab for us as well. So, you know, perhaps something to explore in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another question Is the data sets uh, in only unit resolution MS or are also high resolution MS? Do you have complete GCMS or LCMS data sets or just the spectra of respective compounds? So, um, I guess you can navigate back to the the kind of the the data in um, in Spectrus. So what we're storing in Luminata is is typically the kind of low res um, stuff. But I'm sure there is that connection into the high res data as well. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of answer the question? I think that that should uh, that that probably answers it. I think that you have access to a lot of it. It also depends on how you have things set up. I think a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you manually export data from Empower or to attach it to Luminata, or is this done automatically um, as a result set? So there is a little bit of that manual manipulation. So within Luminata, you navigate to the Empower project and the result set manually, you know, kind of click to append it to the stage that you want, and then um, it does that automatic um, appended. I don't know the word appendedness. <laughs> um, <laughs> word is um, to bring that. So it is that kind of click, click to bring it in. Yeah. Okay. Um, is Luminata used as a tool connecting different sites, or is it just one site alone? So we're using um, so Luminata with at Pfizer. Um, it's globally used so our colleagues in Groton Analytical um, are also using it and we can view their stuff they can view our stuff so it's a global a global tool accessible to us and you were mentioning at the beginning of the presentation that you're part of a team that's maybe implementing Luminata worldwide is there anything more that you can say about that yeah so um, I mean our two main um, you know, our two main analytical sites are the the Sandwich site okay. and the Grotten site. So, you know, that that's the kind of the global team that's been working on it. Okay, great. Um, so yes, the similar question here that should be addressed. 
um, have you only worked with internal data to date or have a strategy of bringing in analytical data into Luminata from external contract labs as well? Yeah, we have. Um, so we we have worked with with one lab in the UK um, to trial um, bringing their data into Luminata. So um, they there's a an add-on um, which is available to to everyone. Um, I believe it's um, it's a free of charge add-on that can be added to Empower, for example. Um, at the contract site and then that means that they can export their files into a Spectrus, a format that's compatible with Spectrus um, and we can then bring that into Luminata. So we do have that system mm -hmm. set up with, with one particular contract lab. Yeah, and I would say that that's something that uh, that the team is working on, you know, as well. Like we're we're building up even more functionality in that area as soon. So hopefully, we'll have some more content to to share on that uh, for people who are interested in it in uh, the the coming months. Hopefully, um, so boy, there are a lot of questions. Actually, people are very uh, it, it good uh, interested in this, which is which is lovely. Um, you. Okay, uh, you mentioned input from different platforms. What is the variety of data export? Can the filtered data be processed within Luminata, uh, drawing graphs, etc.? There is some, I believe there is some ability to, to draw graphs um, in Luminata. And there is, um, I mean, Jesse, you may be able to speak to this a little bit more. There's the Luminata web as well, which I think has the ability to, um, you know, kind of visualize graphically, for example, stability, de degradance, that sort of thing. Um, it's not something that we've actually explored um, fully yet at Pfizer, but Jesse, I don't know if you can speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, I would say that um, in terms of particularly what's available in Luminata Web, I, I can't really speak to, but I do know that there are some companies that use it for reporting of various sorts that you can do things like exporting um, you know, various types of Spectrus files, various you know, PDFs, or, or, or maybe some uh, CSV files, etc. Uh, I don't you know, know exactly what uh, the, the total range of possibilities there, but um, it's something that particularly if you have uh, certain types of data sets that, that you want to have access to or you want to be exported from it. Um, oh, there's a lot of possibilities there. Um, do lab experiments, i.e. Uh, DOE, are included in the Luminata workflows? Are you doing any uh, DOE work in, in Luminata right now? Um, so we haven't um, imported sort of DOE. It, it's something that, that, again, we want to look at in the future. Um, I believe a company called Advi are, have got um, a workflow to, um, to kind of database DOE um, data, but you know I, I can't speak to that. that that's Advi, but mm -hmm. yeah, I believe they are using that, using it for that. How do we label unknown impurities with RTs since uh, we may not have established from an early phase molecule? How, sorry. Okay, so the question I think is like how. Repeat the question. How do we? So uh, like labeling unknown impurities. So when you, for instance, I'm uh, imagining you have some you know, chromatograms that have unknown impurities that are part of them. Maybe you start off by labeling them with RRT values, and then how do you, I guess, um, how do you label the unknown impurities if you don't have a molecule that's uh, connected to it? Is that clear? Yes, yes, so we do we do label them by um you know typically by RRT and then um that I guess that becomes then its own entity in Luminata and has a record in the compounds database and then once a structure and a compound number has been assigned to that um, RRT, you can then update it and it will update all instances of that um, that RRT, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that we have we do have some other uh, technology that's involved in m managing these unknown impurities as well that um, I, I unfortunately I don't have the materials to, to speak to right now, but um, maybe I'll have somebody get in contact with you if people have more questions on that on that subject. Um, how do you manage changes in method from Empower? 
so we um there's the ability to um kind of add a comment as to what test method is used um and i guess that's kind of up to individual projects and teams how how they kind of manage that change um you know but i, I know certainly from my experience i would put a reference to the test method that's been used and then i know as project manager you know the evolutions of the methods and so on Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of um, ability to add these things with metadata as well. And that's a way to, to help you know, track this. So that, that there's a lot of um, freedom there. Uh, what kind of interactions with ELN do you have? I guess in terms of the context of that question being, yeah, I'm not quite sure the context of that. Um, I imagine maybe what what is the interaction between your ELNs that you that you have and then with Luminata. So, for instance, if somebody has data in their ELN, can you see that through Luminata, maybe, um, or that, or or how are the two connected? So, I guess we have um, we have the ELN where the you know the experiment has been carried out, and we might have like the mpower reports um stored in the cloud that's attached to the um to the ELN so in the SDC and then um yeah you know, within luminata then we have a reference the record has a reference to the lab notebook for example um so there's that kind of linkage um but the two kind of don't speak to each other as such certainly okay. in our current workflows okay um is the uh it's uh, we're getting a lot of questions i really appreciate it but it's very hard for me to keep track of all, all of them a lot of a lot of enthusiasm here um is luminata being used to keep audit trails for compliance purposes no it's not so um our gmp data and so on still resides in the um um i guess kind of in the native systems and so on but we don't you know we don't kind of keep audit trail reports and so on in luminata how do you ensure data integrity of analytical results how to prevent the data is reprocessed incorrectly do you use versioning signing locking of analytical data so we can't um we can't touch the kind of the native content that is locked and so there's no kind of you know re reprocessing of that native um you know that native content um so luminata is you know purely i guess a kind of a you know like a batch table repository that sort of thing so it wouldn't be the official kind of you know source data um when it comes to say you know regulatory filings and so on we would always go back to that that content we wouldn't use use anything from luminata yeah i think that's generally something that is a sort of a principle behind a lot of acd lab software is that we like to keep the raw you know files and then we have the, the processing that happens in addition you know to that so that, that still we have that raw you know data that um is available to to be reviewed um so what functionality uh, was shown that was custom made for Pfizer or, or is available uh, for other customers as well? I don't know. Um, maybe you can answer the, the first bit about the the, the parts that were uh, that you developed with with us. So the direct linkage into Empower um, was developed for us, and that stability, that dynamic stability map. Um, also, I believe the extra levels to the individual records so i think as standard you get a level one and a level two and we we built in with acd labs a level three and four as well to help organize the data um, mm -hmm. better yeah and i think that the the um we often partner with uh, individual companies that have particular you know needs or interests in in what they are doing but i think that uh most of what you know, what we develop with them is eventually uh, available to other folks as well so if there's particular you know, pieces of that that is um of interest to to other companies i'm sure that um our solution manager would love to, to talk to you uh about that uh, as well but is it's definitely something that is not you know strictly for Pfizer only, it's probably possible for other clients. 
going through more of these questions. Um, will you be able to do trend analysis using stability data? Yeah, you, you can look, I guess you can look for, for trends. Um, is the question kind of related to particular software that, that might be available? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, context with this one, so maybe take it how, how you think makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can you can visualize, you can visually look for trends. Um, like we touched on earlier, there is that ability to, to build graphs as well and, and look at trends in that way. Okay. Um, then, since the analytical methods are also alive during a chemical development, I am interested when filtering the chromatograms based on retention times, is it possible to set the percentage of deviation? That's not something I've explored. Yeah, not, not, I'm not sure uh, my, myself for right now. Um, I think that we covered most of these. One other question that I had um, was around, uh, you, you did list some uh, other pieces of software that Pfizer has used in the past for doing drug degradation databasing. Um, were there, what features does Luminata offer compared to those alternatives that uh, you think were particularly helpful? I mean, I guess I don't have direct experience of some of the earlier um, softwares that were listed. I'm just aware that that kind of through Pfizer's journey with with databasing, that's the kind of the software that was used historically and so on. Um, but for me, you know, the power and the beauty of Luminata, as I spoke to in the presentation, is just having everything in one place. Um, you know, having access to the stability map and the structures the chromatograms, um, the, the mass spec and NMR data, um, impurity amounts, um, and so on, just all in one one place, you know, one-stop shop type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think then that that should um, be for today. I hope that we got to most of the questions or at least something that was similar. There were there were some repeats here, but uh, that as I said, there, there were a lot of questions and I really appreciate the enthusiasm. I don't know if there was any final comments that you wanted to, to add. Um, no, nothing, nothing further from me. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much to the audience as well. It was uh, a, a lovely conversation. So take care, folks. Thank you. Bye-bye.